Good morning, folks. We're CME tracking this morning, going to see some weather as well and some articles of interest from the journals. And we are starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com because you might notice that NASA's SDO feeds to all websites, including their own, are a bit stuck in the past. No worries. We know where the data is. On the south, things are a bit snappy just astride the near equatorial coronal hole. Sunspots are departing. Solar wind still awaits intensification as geomagnetism stays quiet. But in ionized helium, we can see the cause of the coronal motions we saw earlier. One and two go the filaments into space as non-flare-driven CMEs. It does look like a good bit of the bog plasma will miss Earth, but there is a high likelihood of minor impact, especially if some of the CME is hiding behind the central disk that blocks solar glare. Stereo does suggest such a bulk may exist. Neither is tremendously large and significant solar storms are certainly not expected, but it is a good chance for moderate space weather and some aurora when they arrive in two or three days. Couple interesting weather events to hit. Massive high pressure on a cold cell in Mongolia may have shattered records. And the first major cold sink of the year hits Colorado. Boulder takes negative 40 a couple times a year. Negative 50 always feels like a step beyond. FYI, just 90 minutes south of that, we never got below about 10. Up first in the articles is two side by side. Folks, they've got a long way to go to rectify carbon dating and other isotope dating methods. But here we do see baby steps in process and application of those concepts and new ones to help them explain the discrepancies. High difficulty articles, but worth it. Climate science picking up right where 2020 left off. Cloud uncertainties are not only crushing the models in terms of albedo, insulation, radiative forcing, and more, but they lead to terrible predictions, CO2 bias in the models, and here it's the same story of rough models and cloud uncertainty. Good one there from the Journal of Climate. Up next is a paper confirming one of the weirdest admissions of climate science in 2020, that the COVID lockdowns crushed pollution. It was a record drop in pollution, and it immediately triggered the planet to warm up. That's right. The aerosol cloud makers that block sunlight are indeed more powerful than CO2 and even vapor contrails. Given the human enhancement of some of those contrails, that really says something. Basically, CO2, plant food, seems to be their enemy, but all those micro-particulate pollution poisons are cooling the planet so they're just fine. Dingbat jackalopes. And last but not least, folks, the AGU is picking up atmospheric electrodynamics and space weather forcing right where they left off in 2020 working out the models and equations and processes for conductivity enhancements during particle bombardments, mostly from the solar wind, cosmic rays, and CMEs. This conductivity amplifies the global electric circuit and that aerosol exchange vertically in the atmosphere. From electrodynamic space weather to ionospheric conductivity here, and from there, it's in our system and it's going to come down. Learn all about the sun's effect on weather and climate in our textbook, now available again in hard copy at otf.cells.com. We greatly appreciate your support. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.